Okay guys, so we got the whole bottom of the bolt pretty much roughed out and I went ahead and roughed down most of this handle. It's still going to get a little thinner. Um, I started carving inside the spoon and uh, that's what I'm working on now. And really it's just a matter of uh, just digging it out. I stay, I usually stay about an eighth inch away from the rim all the way around or so, maybe a little bit more until I get it to where I I want it and then I start touching things up a little bit at a time and uh, you know until you get where you want it this is going to be a huge huge spoon um, like I said it's going to be a big serving spoon so but the grain's going to be kind of cool in it when it gets a little bit of oil on it it'll look really nice let me go ahead and work on this for a bit and we will uh, see what it looks like let me uh, put the camera on a little bit better. working through this knot on the other side no this is kind of important though because this is where we want to get the bolt really thin because if we don't get it thin when it dries out the rest of the way it'll uh, crack this is a big spoon it's almost like making a cook so really Definitely green wood, which is what I like to carve. I think it's remote people like to carve, but I could be wrong on that one. And of course the dog's sitting here wondering whether or not she can go chase the chickens. Which she can't. By the way, if you guys haven't met Ruby, our hound dog, who is right here laying at my feet, she uh, is the newest member of our family. And she's still a puppy. Well, not quite. I guess she's two now, but she's still ornery. If you guys are on my Facebook page every once in a while, you'll see me post pictures of her and my son. I got a two-year-old son, three-year-old son now, who just had a birthday, and a two-year-old dog, and they get along so well if they get in trouble, they're usually both together when they're doing it. Anyways, just work on digging these things out. And uh, like I said, this knife can be super aggressive when you want it to be. Yeah, so you got to be careful. And uh, I 
be trying to work around this knot too, so I'm gonna break it. Yeah, and I think my wood's drying out on me a little bit. It's been sitting in my garage for a couple of months. It's still green, but not green as grass green. Still good to carve though. I haven't carved apple in a long time. That's why I kind of saved it. I thought it would be kind of fun. I got a few other pieces too. I'm going to do a little, some little small eating spoons. In fact, I might do one of those next in front of the camera just for fun. It's been so hot the last couple of days. It's not really a good time to go working in the forge. I am going to do a sharpening video on my tools here this week too. So people can uh, see how I sharpen my tools. Which, to be honest with you, all I use is a leather strop to sharpen my tools. My tools are hard and razor sharp when you get them. And as long as you keep them stropped, they'll stay razor sharp and they'll stay really good for you. It took me a long time to play around with the heat treat on this stuff, but I've gotten to the point now where it'll stay sharp for a long time and it's still pretty pretty tough I uh, don't get too many chips or anything in fact I haven't had a tool chip in a long time not to say that if you tried to really bury this in there and muscle it through something that it wouldn't chip. But just like that knot. That knot should make a tool chip, but it doesn't. should make a cheaper tool chip, we'll put it that way. And now you can see your face. Hi Ruby. Huh. Say hi. Say hi to the camera. Ruby, come. Sit. 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 Good girl. You stay. Don't stick your nose too close. You can lay down. I'm gonna eat my wood chips instead. Well, the apple, probably not bad for you. Just don't eat the other knife down there. Okay, anyways, guys, I'm gonna shut this off for a little bit, do this bowl out, and I'll show you what it looks like in a little bit.
gonna have some pretty green in it. That's exactly what I wanted was a spoon with lots of green and there's a couple of knots in it. They're really gonna make this thing cool. It's got some swirls in the green and everything. This will be a nice looking looking spoon. Big but nice. That's what I'm talking about switching grains or switching directions when it doesn't seem like it's cutting right. Just a little bit of a different angle and direction to make a huge difference in how it cuts or doesn't cut. Ruby, come. Sit. I was going to use the gouges, but I guess I'm not going to this time. I'm not having too much fun with this. Maybe we'll use them on the smaller spoon. The reason this handle is longer on this thing is because I like to be able to grab it back here once in a while. Use my thumb and sort of rotate it around and sometimes at the same time I'm pulling it back and it makes like a slicing cut and uh, you know it just gives you some more options having this longer handle you're able to reach down into things a little deeper um, you know just because if I didn't have this longer handle on it and this was like a smaller Mora type knife I'd be like this most of the time going like that whereas I can still lay it in there because it's got a bigger hook on it and I can still lay it in there and get the chips out. Ruby, come. Ruby. Hey, Tom. 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 Sit. Sit.
all you coonhound people out there, how do you, how many of you know a coonhound that will sit there like that? Um, I didn't even think it was possible until we went through dog training class. And I, uh, gotta tell you, it uh, made a world of a difference. I don't think there's a dog that isn't trainable now. first got her she was a save me dog come here baby come come ruby come sit sit you get stubborn she was a save me dog and she was kind of vicious and didn't like the other dogs in the house and now everybody gets along in there and things have really turned around she's turned into uh just one of the one of the family part of the family Still doesn't listen all the time though. Come here, Ruby. Come. Come. Sit. Sit. But anyways, it's better than she was, and she's happier, we're happier. And now she doesn't even have to wear a collar or a leash, I should say. She does so well. Look for the chickens. Every once in a while she tries to chase the chicken. She hasn't gotten one yet, thank God. If she gets one, then we're in trouble. Right? Right. Okay. Well, you guys get the gist of it. I'm going to finish this puppy up. This bull up, and I'll show you what she looks like. I'm just trying to take some light cuts to clean up my cut marks, basically. I'm going to take a little stock out here and there where I think it needs it. It's a giant spoon. I didn't really expect it to be this big. I mean, I did, but I was hoping it would have more bend in the handle for a ladle type thing. But it's okay. This is going to be a huge cooking type spoon, serving type spoon. It's kind of neat in a way too. Let's make good serving spoon at our house because we like big servings. Actually, most of my serving spoons go pretty quick because they people like them. I usually give them away for Christmas presents and stuff like that, and everybody's happy for them, happy about them. Every once in a while, you'll see me do this, and I'm trying. What I'm doing is trying to judge the thickness of the wood. Like I said, you gotta be very careful with this knife because you can it's it's very aggressive, so you can get in there deeper than you think you are pretty easily. And for me, I like the tool marks in my stuff. I think it makes it look like it like it should, like it was hand carved. I try not to sand anything. And if I leave tool marks in it, so be it. I know I go to like the flea markets and stuff, and there's people that sell spoons 
at the flea markets and they're all nice and sanded and they look perfect. I've never really been into that. crafter by nature so I don't usually carry sandpaper with me. Go around and clean this edge up. Try to start blending in cuts. Almost just scraping it more than cutting it. Okay, now I will just, you know what, let me pause this. Okay, now I will just go around the outside of the edge with this knife and just sort of smooth it out and, and put it 
the angle that I, or the, the levelness that I want it. And this is one where you might have to change directions. You don't want to cut too deep into, into that edge. And basically, I'm just trying to square it up. Because it is, you notice I didn't do that when I was carving the spoon. I just did the outside and then carved the inside out. And then the last thing I do is just make it, uh, I got it dipping up right here, which is fine. I don't mind that a bit. Um, it's all what you like, really. There you go again. I'm just eyeballing it. This is kind of a rough spoon, um, but it's a fun one. They don't have to be perfect all the time. This is where sometimes it pays to have a longer knife, so let me go grab a longer knife.
Okay, I think we have it looking pretty good. I'm gonna have to give it a light sanding. I hate to do that, but I got all kinds of dirt prints on it from my hands, but it'll be a real light sanding. Um, and then I think we're gonna call this thing done. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just get a thing and sand it real light just to take the, the dirt from my hands off of it, and then we'll uh, give it a look. Okay guys, somewhere on this video, I accidentally skipped a part. I thought I hit record and I didn't, but um, it was right at the part where I said, looks like I need to get a longer knife or a longer knife will come in handy or something like that. And what I did was I took the longer knife and sort of used it to sort of check and see how level I am across here. And then if I wasn't quite level, I could use both sides of the blade to level it up. But that's what I used the longer knife for. Um, we have this thing basically done now. Uh, and we're going to put a coat of lince, or not lince oil, but uh, a little bit, I keep a little bottle of olive oil out here. It's in an old steak boss sauce bottle. And we'll just uh, give this a real coat real quick and we'll see what it looks like. So let me go ahead and give it a coat. Um, and we'll, uh, or actually, you know what? Let's just do it right here on screen. It's not that big a deal, I guess. I still gotta go over this thing one more time when it dries and just kind of take care of any 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 little spots that don't quite look right, but right now it's still pretty green. So we'll just sort of smear a little olive oil on there. So it'll help keep it from cracking too while it is drying. It'll make it dry a little slower, really, is what the deal is. And, of course, olive oil's food grade, so everything's safe. This thing's going to have some really cool color to it, though. That's what I love about doing stuff like this. Ruby, come. Lay down. Sit. No, you're not drinking the olive oil. Sit. Sit. I know, it's not really bad for you. And you just give it a really good coat. And it'll keep it from cracking. Hopefully. And the dog is licking my hands. That's okay as long as you don't lick the spoon. And this is what you end up with. You end up with a serving spoon, a very big serving spoon, might I add, but this would be great for like chili or stew or something like that, where you got a big pot of something and it's in, or whatever and don't lick it, dog. And it will uh, work out real nice for that. But uh, there you go. Um, she's all done, basically. A little bit of cleanup to do on it. Don't step on my knife and uh, we'll let it dry real good hopefully it won't crack clean it up a little bit and then we will uh, have ourselves a really nice wooden spoon here so I'm gonna call that video done and this is gonna be posted as the uh, you, know, you guys will see it when you watch it but anyways um, just want to say thank you like subscribe share yeah anyways thank you um, for watching like subscribe share um, you know I'm on Facebook under Carl Mellison uh, I got an Instagram account it's under Carl Mellison um, you can check out my website um, hunter.net and 
Let's see what else. Etsy store. Oh, I have an Etsy store that is currently a punter. Um, and you can just check all that stuff out if you want. Um, if you don't want to, that's fine too. But anyways, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.